Hello, my name is Matt Roberts. I'm currently in June of 2020, a third year medical student at the University of Alberta. And this video is a part of a series that I'm making to help people who are familiar with creating traditional lectures to create online video content. Here's a list of some of the topics I'm covering in this series. Links to those videos in the description below, along with any other videos that I end up making. This video is going to be about video content, so let's get started. So to start off, I want to talk a little bit about synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Synchronous teaching is where the teaching and the learning both happen at the same time. Asynchronous teaching is where the teaching happens in advance, for example, me recording this video, and then the learning can happen whenever is convenient for the learner. I'm of the opinion that we should use asynchronous teaching more, especially in medical education. I believe that we can use asynchronous teaching to deal with the understand and remember part of the learning process, and then we can save synchronous teaching for the apply, analyze, evaluate, and create part in truly interactive sessions. This can apply in normal learning situations, just as much as it applies right now during these exceptional circumstances during COVID. So for example, instead of giving the same lecture that you've given maybe for years, you could create a really good quality version of that lecture as an online video that you could reuse for years to come. Then you could use your time with the class to do something truly interactive. For example, you could maybe begin by addressing any questions that students have from watching the video that you created, and then split students up into groups uh, where they could work through cases, you could do simulations, you could have a patient come in and talk about their experience, or you know whatever creative idea you have. Maybe you did four lectures before. You could take all those lectures and make them into an online experience and then have four sessions, each with a quarter of the class, and you would have a smaller class size so you would actually get to interact with every single learner in each of those sessions. I know some people say that traditional lectures uh, can be interactive, people ask questions. I find that, generally speaking, they really aren't that interactive. Uh, it's generally the same people asking questions all the time and some lectures really there is no interaction Nobody asks any questions and it might be a really great lecture But why not put that lecture online as a video and then use? human beings interacting uh, to do that to have real interaction and Yes, we do have vodcast, but these vodcasts are often uh, poor quality recordings. Sometimes the audio quality is really bad in them. Sometimes they are actually missing content. The lecturer may be pointing to something in the room that you have no idea what they are talking about if you're watching it on the vodcast. Students are increasingly skipping in-person lectures and watching the vodcasts. I think some uh, lecturers feel that this is because the students are lazy, but I can tell you that I did that because it, I found it was a more efficient use of my time. Um, I could watch the videos when I felt most alert and most able to learn rather than maybe being half asleep in an early morning lecture. Uh, I could also speed them up, slow them down, pause them. I could rewatch parts and just it, uh, it was a much more efficient learning process. In fact, a recent report from the American Association of Medical Colleges showed that by second year, more than half of medical students are attending their lectures only in the virtual sense. And that's increasing every year, and that report was actually from 2017. So I think when you uh, think about that, isn't it time that we start putting more effort into improving the quality of these asynchronous lectures? I'm also very passionate about the FOMED movement. This is basically just a movement to create online medical education content and make it freely available to anyone online. I think that's an inspiring future 
And if you are considering creating online medical education content, I would just urge you to consider making it freely available. So one barrier to creating asynchronous online video content may be that lecturers are very comfortable with the traditional lecture format and not with producing this type of online video. So in order to be the change that I want to see in the world, I thought I would create a short video series myself that could give someone who is not super techy, who maybe doesn't want to spend a lot of money and maybe is a busy uh, physician who doesn't have a lot of time and show them some easy, cheap tips that uh, will allow them to create some really good online video content. Additionally, being in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, I know there are a lot of teachers out there who are having to take their teaching online, so maybe this can be helpful to an even wider audience. This video is going to be the actual substance of the video, what you put in the video and what you say and do on camera, which is obviously the most crucial point to making a great video. So without further ado, let's get to my top four tips. Tip number one, you can make these videos shorter than traditional lectures. With traditional lectures, we're usually locked into an hour or two hour format, but there's no reason you need to stick to that format when you're creating an online video. I would suggest that you stick to somewhere between five and 25 minutes. The reason for this, it's easier for students to digest and review shorter videos, and it's also easier for you to film and update these videos. If you make a mistake, you only have to redo the short bit that you've been filming rather than redoing an entire two hour lecture. And also maybe you need to update the section on uh, medicine, whereas the section on basic video physiology will stand the test of time. Tip number two is to increase your energy to about 125% of what you think is normal. It can be weird talking on camera without another human being there to engage with. A lot of people will just kind of shut down and you know read their slides in a monotone. And actually what you need to do is increase your energy because without actually having your physical presence in front of the students, uh, the video will actually drain the energy that they perceive coming from you. So they say, you know, the camera adds 10 pounds. I don't know if that's true, but I think it sucks away about a third of your energy. So in order to do this, just really try to remember before you start why you're enthusiastic about your topic and try to imagine the person that's behind that camera and think about connecting with them. Also, don't be afraid to share a bit of yourself, share your personality, and share with your students why you're passionate about this topic. Okay, tip number three, how fast should you talk? It really doesn't matter what speed you talk at, you just need to talk at a consistent speed. Medical students are very comfortable with speeding up or slowing down a lecture to uh, match the speed of the speaker's speech to what they prefer. The only issue is if you speak very slowly and then you suddenly speed up and then you're speaking very slowly and then you talk really fast. There's no way for the student to then fix that later by speeding up or slowing down. So just talk at a consistent pace. Tip number four is to be concise. I'm trying to restrict my tips to things that apply specifically to video and not just to lectures in general, but I just want to put out a plea on behalf of medical students everywhere to restrict the information you present to essential practical information. Medical students are constantly overwhelmed. They're being bombarded with so much information. It's, uh, you know, everyone says it's like drinking from the fire hose and course you're very passionate about your topic so you are going to want to share everything you know but I think if you actually try and cut it down to what is essential and practical for the student to learn and you just really emphasize why everything you're presenting is very essential and very practical you're going to get more retention than if you just bombard the student with everything you know about a subject. You can always provide links and other resources for keener students 
to go further in depth. Okay, that's it. So to review, my tips are number one, make your videos shorter than a traditional lecture, aim for five to 25 minutes. Number two, increase your energy to maybe 125%. Think about connecting, think about sharing your personality and your passion. Number three, talk at a consistent pace. And number four, be concise. Here are some of the other videos I'm doing in this series, links to those videos, as well as any other videos I do in the description below. If you have any suggestions uh, that you think I've missed or you have any questions for me, please leave a comment below. I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.